Be sure to write down our contact information because we're waiting to hear from you. We'd like for you to send in your questions to Q&A so that we can get these on the air and you can even view the program that your question is entertained on a particular program. Well, let's spend a little time in some panel discussion and we're going to go back to uh, the question of Charles's question of who is the Antichrist. And I, I appreciate you showing that the article is not there mm -hmm. and also pointing out that there are many Antichrists. Right. Well, in verse 18, in fact, of 1 John 2, John says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are many Antichrists, mm -hmm. whereby we know that it is the last time. So John is saying that the beginning of the last time, the last age, the Christian mm -hmm. age, no specific time is given, but during that last time or during the Christian age, since there's no specific time given for that last time, but the Christian age in general, it's always been true. There have been people that were opposed to Christ teaching false sure. doctrines about Christ. So one of the indications of it being the last day, the last time, was the appearance of Antichrist in John's day where there were many of them, and they've continued all the way down until sure. now. So there's not just one specific Antichrist that people want to identify today, and they've identified so many people as Antichrist, like Hitler and Kissinger and all kinds of Reagan ideas of who the Antichrist is. But it was a spirit. It was an yeah. attitude of false teaching sure. about the nature of Christ being the Son of God. And that's still with us always. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, with the uh, belief of premillennialism, that is a major point in that belief, uh, the yeah. Antichrist. And it is very difficult to get people to understand that, as Charlie has already said, that what Peter says, there are many. Sure. You know, there are many back then. And it's just the fact that they have uh, believed what they have been told. And oftentimes, uh, they don't go to where the scriptures really are to, to help them understand the truth. They're still going by what they've been told. Sure. But some in that camp think that it's taking place right now. That person mm -hmm. has already been born and he's getting yeah. ready to reveal exactly. himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I would add, it's interesting that the word Antichrist never appears in the book of Revelation, never appears in 2 Thessalonians 2 in connection to the man of sin. The only place that we could use to define, as Charlie's mm -hmm. well pointed out, is 1st, 2nd, and you know, the, the, the small epistles of John. And so mm -hmm. we are left to, to say, well, how does John, the inspired writer, inspired of the Spirit, define it? It's any person who denies that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That has to be our yeah. definition. Mm -hmm. If we're Bible believers, it has to be. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. All right, let's move on to Tommy's question about living longer today. Uh, we're certainly in a different environment, and mm -hmm. uh, could, not, could there not be a deterioration of the gene pool as well, uh, which would be a natural yes. phenomenon? And it's right the opposite of evolution, which is always improving <coughs> and increasing mm -hmm. and expanding, right. but uh, uh, there's an indication that things are going uh, toward the direction of devolution rather yeah. than... Yeah. Evolution is no part of, yeah. the, of the plan or the Bible. Yeah. Well, it's a fact that uh, radiation comes from outer space. Sure. And, and we use radiation in cancer treatment and other treatments. Why? To destroy, mm -hmm. not, not to give life. And with the depletion of uh, the ozone layer and the canopy gone, there's nothing really to stop a lot of those rays mm -hmm. from coming in sure. on us. Okay. And we've you know, got a problem. <laughs> That's right. Anything else? Uh, just, a, just a quick flash in my brain. I was thinking in Ephesians 6 where he's, he's quoting from the Old Testament about children obeying their parents and he says in verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. There are other factors involved too. The preponderance of sin upon the earth has certainly mm -hmm. decreased mm -hmm. the longevity sure, of man. Yeah. As we give ourselves over to sin, it just wears man out. It's mm -hmm. done that yeah. and sure. we've had exactly. you know, centuries of, of that for now. One other thing that's interesting to me, I read somewhere, David, that uh, whenever God made Adam and Eve, the intention was they would live forever on the mm -hmm. earth and in the Garden of Eden, the Tree of Life and all those things. So in the early time, beginning uh, of the history of the human race, genetically it may have been that they were stronger in some ways that they would have lived longer mm -hmm. because of their makeup, but because of sin and other things that have come into the world and uh, the fact that uh, further away you get from the Garden of Eden and what God's intention sure. was for them to live forever on the earth, and those things may have been involved as well. Yeah, perpetual life is, uh, it was the intention of God in, in the garden, as mm, it appears. Right. Uh, I, w I wouldn't go so far to call it eternal on the earth, no, but at I, least perpetual. Right. Uh, 
Okay, Any, anything else on that particular question? Well, let's move right on then. Uh, David, I appreciated uh, your distinction between uh, the foreknowledge of God and God making things to happen and this question about uh, why should we pray for anything if God's already got it laid out. And that, and that goes to an idea that uh, it's, it's not taught in the Bible, but it's, you know, denominational theologians have taught for a long time that we're just uh, like, you know, puppets Robert. on a string. If, yeah. God, if God foreknows something, then you don't have a choice. It's already predetermined. But the Bible teaches that the responses that God would make to our prayers is, uh, it's not we, we, we don't really even have to pray because He's preplanned it. His responses are in direct correlation to mm -hmm. our prayers. Mm -hmm. He may foreknow what we're going to pray, mm -hmm. and He can already set in motion all of the arrangements to the answer of our prayer, but it's in response to the free sure. will choice that we make in, in prayer. And so that's, that's really the difference between the two there. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Anything else? We've got some time. Well, when we look at... Uh, what God has planned out and what He hasn't, well, the, the Scriptures tell us, you know, God's will. And many people have said, well, I, I know God's got a plan for my life, and as if it, God has already planned it out every step for them, but the only plan that God has for a person is for them to uh, be saved through the gospel. That's, you know, God allows us that free will and choice, as David has said so uh, very well. Uh, what would it benefit God for us to not have choice? I mean, it makes no sense for God to create man and create man in a sense that uh, he's a robot or that there's no love for God. I think that's the main point. God wants man uh, to serve him out of love. Mm -hmm. And that's the plan. That's God's will. And of course, the will is, is revealed in Scripture. Well, the extension of that very uh, fallacious thought that you're airing there is if, if God is responsible for me and I go uh, against the will of God, mm -hmm. then God's responsible for my being lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Well, you have the idea, too, of God knowing all things, as uh, has been discussed. And if God knows all things from the beginning, has all knowledge, why would we ask or seek in prayer for things that He knows? Uh, but maybe it's a dependent factor, the fact that we're dependent on God, and God wants us to express that dependency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever he gives in Matthew 7 the uh, statement uh, about a father that has a son asking for bread, will he give him a stone? Mm -hmm. Asking for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Father knows the child needs food uh, and the child asks for it. God knows what we need. God plans. Sure. God in his omniscience knows all things, but it is our expression of dependence on Him that is a part of our prayer life as well. That's right. In fact, uh, Matthew 7, ask, seek, seek and knock. Yeah. Those three terms. And that has to do with petitioning God. Yes. Right. Yes. Folks, we're out of time for today. It's been a good roundtable discussion. I've really enjoyed it and we hope you have too. Be sure to contact us and get your questions into us as soon as possible. We're waiting to hear from you. In behalf of the staff of Charlie, uh, Charlie Cochran and uh, Tommy Leslie and David Smith. I'm your host, David Wade. We hope and trust you'll uh, view all the good programming on GBN. Until we meet again, may God bless you and yours. GBN Q&A is a production of the Gospel Broadcasting Network. If you have Bible questions you would like answered on the program, send them to GBN Q&A, P.O. Box 23604, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37422. Our email address is questions at gbntv.org. Join us next time for your questions and the Bible's answers on GBN Q&A.